get your knowledge from Wikipedia. Get your knowledge from the Bible, not Wikipedia. And I, I don't think that going to the internet is a bad thing. Um, you can listen to sermons on the internet. You can learn a lot from the internet. You can look at what Greek words mean on the internet. Um, if you're confused about what a word means in the King James Bible, you can look at what the Greek word is and then look at the definition. And sometimes that can be helpful. Other times it's not needed, but certain times it can be helpful. And I'm going to be talking about one time that that is helpful. And that is with the word repentance. Now, a lot of people think they know what the word repentance means, or they try and pick it up from context clues, and it's difficult, and they don't know what it means. And this is actually one of the most misunderstood words in the entire King James Bible, in my opinion. And that is because of what people commonly teach it is today. And you can actually find this teaching on Wikipedia, even though it doesn't line up with what the Greek word uh, in the New Testament actually means or what the word actually is. So the word repentance comes from the word metanoia. And I don't know exactly if I'm saying that right. Um, the word repent is different. It's like metanio um, or something. But the uh, word repentance comes from the word metanoia. And it means a change of mind, right? Or a change uh, in the inner man, an afterthought is another good way to put it. Um, there's slightly different ways you can define it, but none of them actually say to turn from your sins. Because that's uh, if you could put it into one word, a good word would be to turn. Um, so it could be turn from a thought, it could be turn from a belief, from unbelief to belief, it could be turn from false idols. Uh, that's a good way to put it as well. But most of the time that it's used in the New Testament, it is to refer to a change of mind from uh, unbelief to belief. But um, God actually repents in Jonah 3.10, and he also says that turning from sins is works. And um, so we know that repentance of sins, even though that phrase isn't in the Bible, if you, if you are talking about repenting of sins as in turning from sins, um, which we are supposed to turn from our sins, that's a work. So it doesn't contribute to our salvation. And God has actually repented, and God does not... Uh, have any sins to turn from. So repentance doesn't automatically mean to turn from sins, um, as we can see here by the definition of metanoia. Now, let's go to the Wikipedia page for repentance. So I just gave you the actual meaning of repentance, right? Because the use the uh, definition is repentance. So repentance and metanoia are synonyms in different languages. Um, as in, the Greek word for repentance is metanoia, and the English word for metanoia is repentance. That's what I meant. So now let's go to the man's definition of repentance. Um, the today modern definition of repentance, what people teach repentance is now. And this is a big difference. Let's read this opening paragraph here. Repentance is reviewing one's actions and feeling contrition or regret for past wrongdoings which is accompanied by commitment to and actual actions that show and prove a change for the better. Well, that's not what the Greek word means. That's not where we get the word repentance from. That might be what people today use it as. But in the 1611 King James Bible, that's not what it meant. I just, sh I just showed you that. In modern times, see, they got to add in modern times, it is generally seen as involving a commitment to personal change and the resolve to live a more responsible and humane life. In other words, being sorry for one's misdeeds. Now, this doesn't even make sense here, because being sorry for one's misdeeds and committing to change are two totally different things. You can be sorry and still not change. Um, it's unlikely, but it can happen. But either way, both are wrong. Both are not what repentance is. It can also involve sorrow over a specific sin or series of sins that, indivi that an individual feels guilt over, or conviction that they have committed. The practice of repentance plays an important role in the soteri soteriological doctrines of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. So you know that they're wrong here when they are uh, basically implying that the way of salvation is similar in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, because that's kind of what, uh, what people refer to as Christianity today, uh, or what people use Christianity as a blanket term 
for a religion uh, that teaches you have to repent of your sins to be saved. And they say Judaism and Islam teach the same thing. So that just shows us here that uh, their idea of Christianity is wrong and their idea of salvation is wrong. Soteriological refers to uh, the doctrines of salvation. Analogous practices have been found in other world religions as well. In religious contexts, it involves an act of confession to God or to a spiritual elder, such as a monk or a priest. This confession might include an admission of guilt, a promise or intent not to repeat the offense, an attempt to make restitution for the wrong, or in some ways, reverse the harmful effects of the wrong where possible. So they've just got it completely wrong from how the King James Bible uses the word repentance. And I can go into verses, I'm not going to, but I can go into verses that talk about repent and believe the gospel, um, you know, repent and be saved. Um, when it talks about repentance in the New Testament, it talks about changing from unbelief to belief and being saved. Um, so let's let's look at the Christianity uh, section here. I'm not going to go into the full um, repentance and Christianity page, but let's look at uh, what they say is specific to Christianity because this is just totally wrong so far. But now they're going to talk about what it specifically means in Christianity. So let's see if they're right, if, it, if they are able to make the distinction from repentance in Judaism and Islam, and uh, see if they can get it right for Christianity specifically. Repentance is a stage in Christian salvation where the believer turns away from sin. Is that what the Bible says? It's not. I just told you that at the beginning of this video, and I showed you what it actually means. Uh, and you can... I. I'm telling you, if you look up, repent from your sins, repent of your sins, turn from your sins, uh, even if you find something that says to turn from your sins, it won't be in the context of salvation, and you will not find anything talking about repentance of sins in the Bible. I actually had a conversation with someone recently where they told me that it's implied. But is it? It's not. And you can't go based on impl implication with the Bible. Everything is clearly stated in the Bible. As a distinct stage of, in the Ordo salutis, I don't know if I'm saying that right, um, but it's, this is talking about the steps of salvation. Its position is disputed, with some the, uh, theological traditions arguing it occurs prior to faith, and the Reformed theological tradition arguing it occurs after faith. So you can actually see here, they, they tell you something true here. The Lordship salvation position, that repentance from sins occurs after salvation all the time, 100% of the time, no matter what, is actually from Calvinism. That's what Reformed theological tradition means. It means Calvinist theology. Um, and the position the position that occurs prior to faith is uh, oftentimes seen as the only other position when it's not. They reject the free grace theology position. And uh, the th it says some theological traditions argue it occurs prior to faith, and the Reformed theological uh, tradition occurs after faith. So they're acting like these are the two uh, different, like, big uh, positions. When both of them are wrong, neither of them are in, the, are in the Bible. And then it actually talks about the Roman Catholic position. In Roman Catholic theology, repentance is part of the larger theological concept of penance. I'm not even going to get into that. You can look into that all you want. Like, I mean, I feel like if you're watching this video and you're trying to learn things on your own, you're probably not a Roman Catholic. If you are, I highly, highly recommend that you watch some videos on, uh, like, if you look up the Bible Way to Heaven, there's a lot of good videos on that. Um, if you don't like that uh, new IFB movement, then um, I know, I know I can't, I'm losing thoughts on, like, uh, trying to think of other people that teach it pretty well. Um, I can't think of anyone right now, but even if you disagree with them on their other positions, if you look up the Bible Way to Heaven... Um, on YouTube or on other video streaming platforms. There are a lot of good videos on that. You don't have to agree with their other doctrines. Just at least agree with that because that is the most important thing. You need to understand that works do not play a part in salvation. Jonah 3.10 tells us that works, uh, that turning from your sins is a work, that repentance of sins works. And it actually teaches us what repentance really is because it says that God repented and God never sinned. So, I think I might actually click on this link. I think I'm going to go to this page. I'm just very curious what this says because I actually haven't read the Repentance in Christianity page. Repentance is a stage in Christian salvation where the believer acknowledges and turns away from sin. Now, 
I will say that you do have to acknowledge that you're a sinner. That part is right. You do have to acknowledge that you're a sinner. Otherwise, you aren't going to even feel the need for salvation because you're going to think you're going to go to heaven because you think you're already a good person. The problem is everyone has sinned. Uh, as a distinct stage in the Ordo Salutis, its position is disputed with something. Yeah, this is basically uh, what it's saying earlier. But here it says in Catholic theology, Lutheran theology, Orthodox theology, and Anglican theology, repentance plays a key role in confession and absolution. So let's, look, let's look at the origins, actually. I'm curious about this. In the Hebrew Bible, the term repentance comes from the Hebrew word group that means to turn away from. This is absolutely correct. David Lambert believes that it is in the writings of Rabbi, Rabbi Yannick, uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I've, I've read that term a billion times, and I just realized I've never said it before. Judaism and early Christianity, that it attains the status uh, of a technical term, a basis of an emerging religious lexicon. Right here, this guy's just using a bunch of jargon. <laughs> uh, don't even know what the point of what he was saying is there. In the New Testament, John the Baptist calls for repentance during his speeches. Jesus also calls for repentance when he proclaimed the gospel for salvation. Completely agree with this. It was a focal point in the teaching in the preaching of Peter and Paul the Apostle. The New Testament, uh, metaneo, can mean remorse, but it is generally translated to a turning away from sin. That's just not true. They always, I was with them all the way up until here. That's not true. Let's see, uh, let's see what they say, Matthew. Uh, 3 2 and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand they link a verse then they say that it's translated as repenting of sins and even in the NIV it doesn't say that in the King James version it doesn't say that but even in the NIV it doesn't say that I mean come on how are they how are they reaching this conclusion that it is translated as turning away from sin it's not what it's translated as Theologically, repentance, the turning away from sin, is linked to a corresponding turn to faith in God. Yeah, it is a turn to faith in God, but it's not It's not linked to that. That's what it is. Especially in that verse. Uh, let's look. Emmanuel Swedenborg and Jonathan S. Rose explain how repentance in the church as a whole is used to take away the serious evils that God cannot overlook. Swedenberg and Rose explain how acts of repentance include any and all actions that result in our not willing and consequently not doing evil things that are sins against God. So let's see uh, who this guy is. I don't. I, I feel like I've heard of him before, but um, okay, he was a Lutheranist, or I don't know why I just said Lutheranist. He was a Lutheran. Um, sorry about that. In the background, my dogs bark sometimes uh, very loudly. In Roman Catholic theology, repentance is fundamental to forgiveness. Yeah, so we can see where that uh, doctrine of turning from your sins for salvation comes from. It's from the Roman Catholic Church. And uh, I'm not going to go ahead and read all these. Um, yeah, I don't think I need to read anything else. I think you got the point here. Um I just completely went through and tore apart this uh, Wikipedia page, and it's not because I'm good at doing that. I'm not very good at, uh, you know, showing how other people are wrong. It's just that they are so clearly, factually incorrect uh, when it comes to what repentance means. And uh, it's frustrating because you can't find repent of your sins anywhere in the King James Bible. And these people act like it is just... A commonly understood thing that that's just what it means it just means to turn from your sins they even know what the Greek means they know what the Hebrew means and they still still don't understand it it's frustrating anyways hope you enjoy this video hope you realize that Wikipedia is not a good place to get all your information about Christianity and that you should read the Bible the King James Bible and uh, if you have trouble you can look up what Greek word means uh, Greek words mean, and you can look up um, another good resource is the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, but I wouldn't use that all the time because I'm not even sure what they define repentance as in that dictionary. I wouldn't use it all the time. Webster was a man, after all, and he was also a Calvinist, as far as I remember. So I would stay away from that if you can, but if there's some less significant words that you need to understand, 
just to understand what um, the Bible is talking about some in some situations. That can be a good resource as well. But overall, we can get we can get everything we need. Sorry, I have the hiccups. We can get everything we need to know from the Bible itself. The Bible oftentimes defines its own words, and you can find it out through context clues. But this is one situation where if you really need to, you look you can look up what the Greek word means. And uh, you get a pretty good definition from this website. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. If not, leave a comment and uh, we can discuss it. See ya.